Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from JujuChicken.com here with another very late tutorial. Um, I'm sorry I didn't release this tutorial on time on Tuesday. Uh, the reason I didn't is because I have a job now working for Mr. Formal, and I'm not exactly used to having a job, so it kind of threw me off. And so now I just kind of get my crap together and start making tutorials earlier than I normally do, and that way I can just get to them to you on time. So, yeah. Anyway, here's this tutorial right now, and what we're going to go over is how to create lightning bolts. And not only are we going to be creating lightning bolts, we're going to be creating them using actions. And since we're going to be using actions, it's going to make things a lot easier. And not to mention, if you don't even know anything about actions, this will give you a pretty good idea of how actions work. So let's just go ahead and get right into this. Uh, we'll start off by making a new document. And it doesn't exactly matter what document you are going to be using. This is just to work with the actual lightning bolt action. And so whatever size you want to use is completely up to you. We're just going to be deleting this later anyway. It's not going to make any difference. And for me, I'm going to stick with 1440 by 900 just because it fits perfectly. See that? 1440 by 900 fits this perfectly. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do with this is fill up our original layer right here with a black color by hitting Alt Backspace. Or you can use a paint bucket tool, you know, whatever works for you. And I'm just going to rename this layer, um, we'll just call this Example Layer. So this would be an example of a layer in some other document that you would be using. And so what we're going to do to get this lightning bolt action started is to bring up the actions little menu right here. And if you don't have this little actions menu, you can just go up to window actions right there. The little shortcut is alt F9 if you don't have that already. And I'm sure on a Mac that will be option F9 or something along those lines. And as you can see down here, you've got your list of predefined actions. And I've got my set of custom actions already. And you can see that I've got my custom lightning action right here. And seeing as I kind of don't want to have a duplicate, I'm just going to go ahead and trash that with this little trash can. And I'll just delete that because, uh, you know, we're just going to make it right now. So before we get into making the action itself, you guys need to know that you need to follow this exactly as I do it. Otherwise, you're going to end up somewhere that's not the same as where I am, and you're just going to get mad, and you're going to complain to me, and I'm going to be like, well, I showed you how to do it, and you obviously didn't listen. So yeah, let's just avoid that, follow this step by step, and you'll be set to go. Alright, so to start things off, we're going to go to this create a new action icon right here and give that a click. And so you're just going to get this little dialog and we're going to name this lightning. And I'm going to put this in my custom set. You can just keep it in your default actions, seeing as that's probably going to be the only thing you have there. And if you want to make a shortcut for this, feel free to do so. I'll just make mine shift F12. And the color, as far as I can tell, has nothing to do with the action itself. It doesn't even do anything. So uh, with all that set, just go ahead and hit record. And so now that you'll see that the lightning action started off over here. And now whenever we do something, it will start adding it as a list to the action. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do with this lightning action is press the letter D, as in dog. And that's going to reset our swatches to black and white. And the reason we do that is so that in the end we don't end up with some random colored lightning. Like we don't want purple and green lightning. That would just look freaking bizarre. And so now that we know we've got our swatches safely reset to the default black and white, I'm just going to go ahead and click this little icon right here to hide the actions. And that way we'll just be able to see exactly what we're doing a little bit better. And so next up we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we're just going to call this layer temp dash bolt all in caps that way it's nothing like any of the other layers and now we're going to swap over to our gradient tool and we're going to make sure we are set to a black to white gradient and we're going to make sure that it's set to linear the mode is normal opacity 100 uh, percent check mark the dither and transparency and all that stuff right there and just for precision purposes, we're going to go ahead and bring up our rulers by hitting Control R or Command R if you're on a Mac computer. And what you're going to want to pay attention to is this top ruler up here. 
And as you can see, as you move your cursor left and right, you'll see a little line kind of moving across the ruler. And that just kind of shows where your mouse is positioned on the canvas. And so what you're going to want to do is position your mouse so that it's on the 20% mark. Uh, something I forgot to mention, if you're not set to percentage like I am, just right click on the ruler and go to percent. Yeah, the default is probably pixels or points or something like that. Just make sure you're set to percent. So now that you've got that set up, just make sure your mouse is at the 20% mark right there. And then click and drag off to the right while holding the shift key and just go all the way over to the 80% mark or just roughly around there, it doesn't have to be too precise. And then when you let go, you should have this nice black to white gradient. And the next thing to do with that is to go up to filter, render, difference clouds. And then we're gonna go ahead and invert that by hitting control I or command I if you're on a Mac computer. And you can already see a sort of lightning bolt effect going on here. Now we just need to make that pop out a little bit, and so the way we're going to do that is by bringing up the levels for it by hitting Control L or Command L if you're on a Mac computer. And the settings that I find work best are to change the black inputs to 40, and then tab over and change the midpoint to 0.1. And then the last number, we're going to change that to 253 rather than 255. And if you hit OK, you should see that we get a nice little lightning bolt effect going on right there. And so once that's done, you're going to want to go over here to the channels tab and give that a click and then mouse over the thumbnail for the RGB channel. And while holding the control key or the command key, if you're on a Mac computer, give that a click and that will load all of the white areas and the grays and all that as a selection. And then swap back over to your layers and we are going to create a new layer and we are going to fill that with white by hitting control backspace or command delete if you're on a Mac computer and now we're going to deselect our selection by hitting control D or command D if you're on a Mac and then we're just going to select the temp dash bolt layer and delete that with our delete key or you can just drag it down to the trash can you know whichever works for you and from there don't do anything else to your layers just go straight back to your actions menu and push the stop recording button right there and there you go you've got all of those recorded into an action so we'll just go ahead and close this up and select that and something that you need to know about this particular action that we made whenever you want to use it you need to select the topmost layer in order for it to work properly otherwise you're gonna get something weird going on so just a little quick demonstration on how you actually make this work just select your top layer and go and make sure you have the lightning thing selected and push the play button or you can just hit your little shortcut shift F12 and when you do that you will see it kinda of go through the steps over to the side and it will make that new lightning bolt layer and there you go you've got more lightning and if you want more, you just go to the top layer, shift F12, it goes through the steps for you, and there you go, you got even more lightning. And so that's why actions are so awesome. It can make anything that's very repetitive into an easy shortcut for you. So now that we know for a certainty that our lightning action works, we're going to swap over to our little picture here, and I'm going to close this up and I'm just gonna delete all this stuff and whatever picture it is that you want to use it's perfectly up to you if you wanna like have like a picture of yourself holding your hand up and you wanna put lightning coming out of your hand or something like that that's completely up to you but I figured it would just work to have a natural landscape just like this so let's go ahead and add in our first lightning bolt by hitting shift F12 or whatever shortcut it is that you used yourself and I'm gonna grab my move tool and I will select this new lightning bolt layer here and I'm going to bring up the transform tool by hitting control T or command T if you're on a Mac and I'm going to click in this corner while holding alt and shift just to size it down a little bit and now I'm just going to position this about there and I'm going to right click it and we're going to warp it and if you decide to do this just kind of mess with it yourself there's no like perfect art on how to do this the right or wrong way it's just kind of messing with it and getting whatever it is that you like and so I'll just call it good right about there and we'll hit the check mark and we want to make this a little more convincing that it's actually coming out as a lightning bolt so what we're gonna do is create a new layer and we're gonna put that in a group by hitting control G and we're just gonna call this highlights and so I'm just gonna select that layer and swap to our brush tool by hitting the letter B 
and I'm going to swap my foreground and background color so that we have white for the foreground color. And so I'm just going to make my brush a pretty big size and make sure that it's got a 0% hardness. Right now we're at about 500 pixels for the size. And so we'll just add a nice little splotch right there. And then we'll go ahead and go down here, size down the brush with the left bracket key. And we'll put another white splotch right here on the base of the house. And uh, I'll just go ahead and add another click just for effect. And so what we're going to do with this is change the layers blend mode to overlay. And that's not enough of the overlay for me, so we'll just go ahead and duplicate that. And maybe duplicate it again. Not a little too much, so I'll just uh, undo that. And that's actually looking pretty good. So it looks like we've got a nice bolt of lightning coming out and striking the house. And I want to add a little bit more to the lightning bolt itself. So I'm going to go back to the lightning bolt layer, which is the layer one right here. And we're just going to go to effects. And we're going to give that an outer glow. And we're going to change this color. And we're going to select with the eyedropper one of these little clouds up here, just a light blue. And we'll hit OK. And we're going to change the opacity all the way up to 100%. And change the blend mode to color dodge. And if you turn that on and off, you'll see that it actually adds a lot to the lightning bolt as it is. So we'll just call that good and we'll hit OK. And we'll close this up over here. And so now we actually want to go ahead and add those bigger lightning bolts over here. So the easiest way to do that is to just uh, close this uh, light highlights group right here and select it. And we will hit Shift F12. And go to the top layer, hit Shift F12 again and go to the top layer and hit shift F12 another time. And so now we've got three very nice lightning bolts right there. So what we're gonna do with those is go to our move tool and we'll select all three of these layers and we're gonna bring up the transform tool with control T and we're just gonna click and drag this to the horizon right there and we'll move this off to the side like so. And that's looking a little Let's see, actually, I think I kind of want to change this so it's flipped around, so I'll just click outside the box and flip it around while holding the shift key. And so that's actually looking pretty good right there. Now I'm just going to squish it down by clicking in one of these sides while holding the alt key. And that's actually looking pretty sweet right there. So we'll just uh, hit OK, or the little check mark thing on the top right there. And we're just going to do the same thing with these that we did before. So I'm actually going to right click the effects icon for this layer and we're going to copy that layer style. And we're going to select all three of these and right click and paste that layer style. And that way it kind of pastes the outer glow there for you. And I'll just close all of these right here. And we'll add a new layer and put it in a group. And we'll call it highlights. And then we'll just add one spot up here. And we'll add one spot down there. And we'll change that to overlay. Where's that at? There we go. And we'll just duplicate that. And maybe duplicate again. Okay, maybe not. But we do need to add another layer and add more up there. Boom. Okay, so that's all there really is to it. You know how to make a lightning bolt using actions, and then you can just use a layer set to overlay with white spots and all that to add to the effect itself, and just kind of make it look like the lightning bolt's actually coming out of somewhere. All right, so thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you were able to learn something new, and I hope I explained everything well enough for you. Uh, that's always a big concern of mine, to explain everything thoroughly enough for just about anyone to follow along. Unless, of course, it's a more complicated effect, in which case it's just an advanced tutorial and I don't explain things as much, but whatever, you guys get the idea. And um, let's see, what else is there? Oh yeah, and one last thing, if you guys could do me a quick favor and like this video or share it with others or comment any of those three or all of them if you so choose, that would be fantastic. I always love it when you guys like the videos, uh, it makes me feel good and whatever, you get the idea. I'm talking on and on like usual, so I'm just going to go ahead and call it an end for this tutorial. Thanks for watching guys, check out some more tutorials like last week's tutorial if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.